this is a normal beating human heart and inside one of the arteries you see this blood traveling through the arteries but over time cholesterols begin to build up and this leads to plaque formation which is what we see here as yellow with the formation of this cholesterol the patient begins to experience a cardiac event which is usually in form of a pain automatically they are rushed to a hospital where the surgeon will insert it into the artery and the essence of the stent is to open up the block artery and once it's opened up then the blood will begin to flow naturally as it used to be before so this is the procedure called coronary angioplasty however there is a problem unfortunately these stents remain in the body permanently because it's not able to be removed as a result over time the presence of these stents continue to cause problems for the patient so most of the time the patient would have to be on medication for all of their life so this is why it is important for us to explore the idea of a bioresolvable stents so let's go ahead and look into this so my name is dr michael okreke and welcome to cm videos this is a youtube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to whatever problem you're trying to deal with and this video is aimed at modeling of stents and how we can optimize its design if you are interested in the kind of content that we're talking about today please do subscribe to this channel so that when contents like this are made you'll be the first to see it stents are essentially very small mesh-like structures as shown in this picture here and you can see the sizes of the stents in comparison to a human finger their designs can vary and depending on the design you have different behavior associated with the stents most stents are made of metals and they remain permanently in the body long after blood flow restoration has already happened this often leads to clogging of the arteries something that is called restenosis this is something that's worth looking into now the new idea is what if we can make the stents from something that like that can dissolve in the body this is not unusual because already we have suture materials that are bioresorbable that are dissolved in the body. So can we not make stents that are able to dissolve in the body? Of course we can and there are ongoing work in this research. So this leads us to the idea of a new class of stents called bioresorbable stents. And this is what we are going to be looking at in more detail. Just a quick question of the day. What are you currently dealing with? from a computational modeling point of view. Most of my videos are made by students, you know, suggesting topics that problems that they want me to deal with. So this is the question of the day. What is your current problem that you're dealing with from computational modeling? Please do put it in the comment section of this video and then I'll review that and see if I can make a video to support you. Because that's really the objective of this channel. It's about helping you create computational modeling solutions in an effective manner. So if you can tell me in the comment section what you're currently dealing with, that's our question of the day and then I'll review that. Thank you for doing that. Now, there is a challenge associated with bioresorbable stents and some of these challenges first and foremost is that the history for such stents is really not good. And, and that's because many years ago, around 1990, a company in, in Japan manufactured this stent called the Egaki Tamai stent. It's the very first version of a bioresorbable stent. So this is over 30 years ago and this stent started off quite well but unfortunately after a while the patients that had this stent in them you know started having some problems and so immediately you know it was discontinued and then around 2000 the company again made another stent called a remedy stent which again is no more used for a coronary artery stent but for arteries in in the leg so but then the, the history associated with this stent is not really very good and so a lot of work needs to be done in this respect now the other thing about bioresorbable stent is that most of it is made from some form of metal but however a major number of them is made from medical grade polymer and traditionally stents are made from metals but if it's made from a polymer then that's going to be a problem and one of the problems to say with that is polymers are weak in comparison to metals so this step as so it may not be able to hold the artery in place and then the next thing here is that it's difficult to modern because they are very small size stents using polymer based materials because traditional method of manufacture of stents is different from if you're going to make it from a polymer and so traditional institution method for polymer would not work very well with this so these are the challenges that face development of bioresorbable stents now what are the approaches that we can take in solving them i mean the first one of the history research and further research will really be the way out to helping with the history we need to discover new materials for modeling of the stents 
definitely new materials with properties that are essential with better properties. Now we can use advanced 3D printing techniques to manufacture these things because these 3D printing techniques are improving all the time so we can use them to manufacture these things without relying on extrusion methods. And then finally we can develop hybrid composite stands or new type of stand materials that have enhanced strength in them that can make them acceptable for use as a stand material. So I went on to show some of these stand designs that can be that has been done and some of them are the virtual domains of stands that we have created. So we created this stand you know, within our research group and then these are designs of these stands that we're looking at. So starting from a stand that looks like that which is called a rest track stand and then a curved diamond stand, diamond cell stand, diamond cell stand, and a skill parallelogram stand. If you want to learn a little bit more about these stands and all the discussions that I'm, I'm giving, this is a, a publication on this issue. So please find this paper and read about it. I'll put a link to the paper in the description section of this video. Now, the other thing is that we now went on to manufacture these stands, and these are examples of 3D printed manufactured stands from a medical grade polymer called PLA. Now, the next thing is we now deploy the stents within a finite element modeling scheme. And this is an example of what the structure will look when you're deploying it within a computer to model them. And so basically right at the middle here, you've got this system here, which is the stent. And then the balloon that opens up the stents when it's inserted into the body. And then the next thing is the coronary arteries, which are basically the artery. And then the, the last bit to that is the plaque. So this is a typical framework for assessing the stand behavior inside the R3. So in terms of the virtual simulation result that you get from running the simulation based on these bioresorbable stands that are 3D printed. So what we have here is the race track model, which shows the right kind of response in terms of the deformation profile for a stand. So here we have the case for a curved diamond cell stand. And then the other one is also a diamond cell stand. But right here, we now find another design of the stent, which is the skewed parallelogram stent. So it's not showing the right kind of deformation when you're considering the behavior of stent. What you end up seeing at the edges here are deformation leading to a dog bone kind of deformation. And on the second case, which is another of the diamond shell stents, what you see here is the strut failing. So this is not a good design as well. And then the final one is another kind of a cell design but it's showing a lot of lateral contraction, which is not also good for the body. So with all of that and running simulations on them, instantly you can see the behavior of different materials associated with this stent. So clearly the first three stents are working extremely well and they're showing you the kind of stent mechanics that we expect. However, the second row of stents are not working, behaving well. So they are not showing the right kind of behavior that you would expect. And the idea is to move on to then ranking them and coming up with the best uh, configuration, best design, you know, for further animal studies associated with these things. So in the end, we went on to characterize this and these are the results of all the stands simulations that we have shown. And we rank from the first to the fifth. And at the end, what you find is that the racetrack design is the best design of all the stands that we have studied. So that's all I wanted to share in this video. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about stents, so I've got two videos here about stents modeling. If you are interested in this channel, please do subscribe and click the like button so when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. Thank you and bye-bye.